So today we're going to continue with the last section of our unit on liquids and gases and we're going to talk about phase diagrams. So a phase diagram basically represents the phases of a substance, so solid liquid gas, as a function of temperature and pressure. We have to keep in mind that this behavior is based on the substance being in a closed system, so no other gas is present, you know, no, no other anything present except the substance itself. And also, this diagram is not drawn to scale, and we have nonlinear axes, so we're just looking at the relationship between temperature and pressure. Okay, so we're going to look at four different experiments with the phase diagram for water to kind of look at some different parts of the phase diagram. So the first experiment we're going to look at is if we have a pressure of one atmosphere. So let's say we have ice in a cylinder, so a closed system, and at one atmosphere our temperature is let's say negative 20 Celsius. Okay, so we're going to apply some pressure. Okay, so we're going to increase our pressure to one atmosphere. And a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, which is right here, okay, the ice is going to change. Whoops. The ice is going to change to a liquid. Okay, and there's no water vapor present here because the pressure is less than one atmosphere. And so this is what's called the normal melting point. Okay, so this is where liquid and solid will change. Once all the solid has changed to a liquid, now the temperature is going to rise again. And so once the liquid reaches 100 degrees Celsius, uh, this, it, the vapor pressure is going to be at one atmosphere. And so this is called the normal boiling point. And this is where boiling will occur. So now we have some vapor. When all the liquid has then changed to a gas, then the temperature will rise again. And now we have only vapor at this higher temperature. Okay, so let's look at a second experiment where we have a much lower pressure. Instead of one atmosphere, we have 0 0.0026 atmospheres. Okay, we're still going to start with ice at negative 20 Celsius, but now instead of our piston pushing down with one atmosphere, we're going to push down with two tor, or 0 0.0026 atmospheres. At about negative 10 Celsius, and remember this isn't to scale, so I'm going to guess negative 10 is somewhere around here, sublimation will occur. And so here's our solid vapor equilibrium. This is our sublimation. So sublimation is where a solid goes directly to a gas. And this is where the vapor pressure of the ice is equal to the external pressure. So once we have reached 2 tor, okay, or that 0 0.0026 atmospheres, which my guess on this graph is somewhere about here, and we have here, so we're reaching that sublimation point. Um, so that's where the vapor pressure of the ice is equal to the external pressure. There's no liquid water at this point. There's only solid to gas, and that's because the vapor pressure of liquid water is greater than 2 tor. And so since we haven't gone above 2 tor, we can't have any liquid. Okay, so now let's increase our pressure a little bit to 0 0.006 atmospheres, or 4.58 tor. We still have ice at negative 20, and now we're going to increase the pressure to 4.58 tors. So at 0 0.01 Celsius, which you can see is right here on our graph, at this pressure and our 0 0.01 degrees Celsius temperature, we have what's called the triple point. And this is where all three states of water are going to be present, solid, liquid, and gas. And so at this point, the solid and the liquid water have equal vapor pressures, and so that's why all three states can exist at the same time. Um, if you ever take chemistry in college, you'll do a lab with this. It's pretty neat. You can see them for a split second, all three. Okay, so now we've looked at one atmosphere of pressure. We've looked at lower pressures, and now let's look at a pressure that's much higher. So if we're at 225 atmospheres, we're above this 218.3, so we're about here. As the temperature increases, the liquid, okay, because at our pressure of 225 and 300 Celsius, so I don't know, let's kind of put us about here, so we're maybe in this area. So we're technically a liquid. Now, normally as we heated, liquid would go to a gas. But at this high pressure, it goes to this intermediate, what's called fluid region. And the reason it does this is because the conditions are beyond what we're going to call the critical point. And the critical point is 218.3 atmospheres and 374 Celsius. So where the C is, that's the critical point. And so the critical temperature is the temperature above which vapor cannot be liquefied. So once we go above 
this 374, we're in this indeterminate area, which is that fluid region. Okay, and our critical pressure is the pressure required to produce liquefaction at the critical temperature. So once we go beyond this point, we're kind of going into this indeterminate unknown land. Okay, so some things that you're going to want to remember to be able to identify are going to be critical point, the triple point, the normal boiling point, and the normal melting point, and then which area is solid, liquid, and gas, and then also where sublimation occurs. Okay, so given a blank one of these, you should be able to identify all of those points for water. Okay, so let's look at some applications of the phase diagram for water. If you notice from the phase diagram, the solid liquid line has a negative slope. So what this means is that the density of ice is less than that of liquid water. And this is very unusual. For most substances, the density of the solid is much greater than the density of the liquid. But that's what makes water so unique and gives it some really neat properties that kind of make it this essential compound for life. If we apply pressure to ice, think about ice skating, right? we're going to reduce the volume. If we reduce the volume, we're going to convert to a liquid because solid ice, because of its lower density, has, occupies a larger volume than liquid water, and so we're going to convert it to a liquid. Uh, this property of ice being less dense also allows fish to survive in winter. If you have fish living in a pond, as the liquid water gets colder, the ice is going to float to the top because it's less dense, creating this layer of ice on top, but yet liquid water at the bottom where fish can survive. Water also has a normal boiling point of 100 Celsius at standard pressure or one atmosphere sea level. Okay, but in Colorado and in other high points, because the pressure is less, it water will boil at a lower temperature. And so in Leadville, water will actually boil at 89 Celsius versus 100 degrees Celsius at one atmosphere. It's quite a difference. Okay, and keep in mind that these phase diagrams are for a closed system. So this describes properties of water in a closed system, but maybe not all the properties of water in its natural setting. Okay, so we talked about water a lot, and water is very unique. Let's look at phase diagram for another substance like carbon dioxide. Here, the solid liquid line is a positive slope. Okay, so here's our solid liquid line for CO2, and here you can notice our solid liquid line for water. Definitely a negative slope, and here we have a positive slope. So what this means is that solid is more dense than the liquid for CO2. And the reason CO2 is so interesting is because at a pressure of one atmosphere, it will sublimate. And so one atmosphere we kind of take as standard pressure. It's kind of what we say is the normal pressure. And so CO2 will go directly to a gas. Well, that gives it a lot of interesting features. You can, you know, we call it dry ice. So you can use it for special effects and things like that. But it's also used in fire extinguishers because it's going to come out as a gas, but then it's going to, um, with the heat of the fire and things like that, it can go to a liquid or that solid powder. And it's also got a cooling effect, okay, which helps to put out the fire. Okay, so this ends our unit on liquids and solids. Have a good day.